good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever the case may be. This is Mike from someonesbones.com, the internet's most trusted source for Nibiru news and information. If you appreciate what we do here, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to visit us at www.someonesbones.com for up-to-date Nibiru news. Two things I want to accomplish today. I'm going to read an article we posted to the website a few weeks ago. At the time, I was not uploading to YouTube, so I'm playing a little catch-up here. The article is still timely and quite important. Before that, however, I want to talk about the Nibiru insanity that seems to drive people wild with rage on the internet. I've said this before. My feelings are that everyone should be allowed to express their views on a topic without catching hate. Criticism is fine. Criticism is valuable. But there is so much vitriol out there between communities, it is just way over the top. Today, some fellow named Chris um, Potter made a short video clip criticizing one of my articles. Well, he went a bit beyond simple criticism. He advo advocated violence against an anonymous person, me, that he does not know. He said I should be shot for posting articles. I'm not going to show a clip of it here. You can visit his channel, Chris Potter, and see for yourself. I'm flattered that he thinks highly enough of me to analyze my work, but saddened that he feels the need to fly into a fit of rage and put out a murderous battle cry because he does not agree with certain information. While I will admit to a certain cynicism, the fact is I am a naysayer and a hatchet man in the fight against violence. I pride myself in taking a punch, and I'll gladly take another because I choose to live my life in the company of Gandhi and King. My concerns are global. I reject absolutely revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. So, we love you, Chris Potter, and we wish you the best. Okay, and now for the story. Keep in mind, we originally published this back on January 4th. I'm going to go ahead and read the piece and then offer, offer some comments afterward. The headline reads, Nibiru fragment to strike Earth in February, says Russian astronomer. And the story reads as follows. On Monday, NASA identified a rogue celestial object hurtling toward Earth at an alarming 26,000 miles per hour. The anomaly, designated 2016 WF9 Whiskey Frank 9, is over one kilometer in diameter and is currently visible in the southern skies. NASA's brightest minds have failed to reach a consensus as to the origin and nature of the celestial interloper. While 2016 WF9 is dark like a comet, it lacks the characteristic gas and dust cloud that define a comet. They, unan un they unanimously agree, however, that 2016 WF9 will harmlessly skirt the Earth sometime during the fir first week of February. Despite these assurances, Russian-born astronomer and Nibiru whistleblower Diamond Damir Zakharovich, that's Diamond Damir Zakharovich, believes otherwise, asserting that the newly identified object originated in the Nibiru system and will strike our planet, surviving its trip through our atmosphere intact on February 16th of 2017. NASA is lying through its teeth, Dr. Zakharovich said. It's not conceivable that they do not know the truth. We have seen the data. The object they call WF9 left the Nibiru system in October when Nibiru began spinning counterclockwise around the sun. Since then, NASA has known it will hit Earth. But they are only telling people now and telling lies. That they call it 2016 WF9 proves they are lying if they just discovered it yesterday, it would have a 2017 prefix. According to Dr. Zakharovich, 2016 WF9 was one of trillions of asteroids churning around Nibiru in a cosmic whirlpool. Occasionally, the asteroids collide, bumping one another like billiard balls on a table, sometimes ejecting one another from orbit. In this case, Dr. Zakharovich said, 2016 WF9 was jettisoned directly toward Earth. Using the slingshot effect, it first doubled speed, circling around the brown dwarf star, then doubled that speed to the third power when it spun behind the dark side of the sun, propelling it toward Earth 
at transversal velocities. The Nibiru system is filled with asteroids and dust. It was only a matter of time before one was hurled in our direction. The object is larger than NASA says. Our preliminary data suggested a 2.2 kilometer asteroid that will have no problem penetrating the atmosphere without burning up, Dr. Zakharovich said. <clears throat> he says the asteroid is composed of hardened tritium encased in a nickel-iron core, essentially making it invulnerable to the thermoletic shielding that normally protects our planet from small space-borne objects. If correct, 2016 WF9's impact will cause widespread devastation, striking with the force of a 3,000 megaton atomic weapon. An ocean impact would boil the seas and potentially generate catastrophic tsunamis. If it hits land, entire cities will be laid to waste. And this is just a precursor to the damage Nibiru will, will cause when it gets here, Dr. Zakharovich said. NASA probably knows the impact zone. I do not. We are all in peril. Although other Nibiru whistleblowers have echoed Dr. Zakharovich's concerns, at least one disagrees with his hypothesis. Astrobiologist Herman Schwartzbaum, for example, says that Nibiru is inhabited by a race of giants and that they deliberately launched 2016 WF9 in an unprovoked attack to cripple Earth's defenses in advance of their arrival later this year. End of story. Before anyone wants to shoot the messenger, I am not saying I believe this will happen. We printed this story based on information received from a vetted source. We have spoken with Dr. Zakharovich several times in the last nine months and ran several articles based on information he provided. I certainly hope it's not true. No one wants to see our beloved Earth to be smashed to pieces or incinerated, including me. I never claim to be a scientist. I'm a writer, a journalist, a reporter. I present information for readers to consider and draw their own conclusions. On that note, I will close for the night. Until next time, this is Mike from Someone's Bones. That's www.someonesbones.com, the Internet's premier source for Nibiru news and information. Have a good one.